Washing wetsuits, not too complicated, but there's a lot of easy things to do wrong that could make your suits last not as long as they could. So we're gonna look over here. I'm gonna give you a little quick tour of what we use here at Wicked Surf. This is just our outdoor washing station with the sinks for washing, rinsing, and our hanging station to let stuff drip dry outside before we move it into our glorious dry room, which dries all of our suits and boots and gloves out with a few different systems that, that will work really well for you at home if you have that. And I'll even go over some other things that you can do while I'm showing you my stuff at your home or where you're staying, maybe in town, that you can do to get the same result, but maybe if you don't have the same system I do, it'll, it'll still work. All right, we're here at the washing station. This is where you would wash your stuff at home or where we wash your stuff when you return it to us. Um, and this is how we do it. We wanna make sure that we get the suits clean and fully rinsed and then drip dry for as long as possible out of the direct sunlight. So one of the main things to know about your suit is it has three major enemies, sunlight, salt water, and sand. Yeah, that's all the things that you're in when you're on the beach surfing. But that is why you usually see, if you ever paid attention at the beach, local people going straight from the surf directly to the parking lot, rinsing their gear off, taking it off properly, and putting it right into their tote. These are called totes. It's what carries our gear. Whereas it's where our wetsuits go when we're wearing our clothes, and it's where our clothes go when you're wearing your wetsuits. It will transport your wet gear around and then that's where you bring it back to your home. And um, that's why we always see people use them at the beach. Their wetsuits are wet and they're in their car. But again, the idea is you're going from the surf where you're surfing with your sur surf gear directly to the parking lot after you rinse, taking it off and then bringing it home to wash it and dry it appropriately. If you are wearing your suit at the beach for many hours, you are in salt water then in sunlight, and then covered in sand. And this will deteriorate the, the suit extremely quickly. And it's one of the main reasons why all of the rental companies out here basically have to buy all new gear every single year because there's a lot of people here on vacation who just want to hang at the beach all day, which is all good. Definitely do that, it's super fun, but don't do it in your wetsuit. You don't need to play four hours of spike ball on the beach in a wetsuit. It's only for surfing and it'll last longer if you just use it for surfing and wash it just like this. We got a three sink system, soap and a little bit of white vinegar. The biodegradable dish soap is what I use. Anything light soap wise is fantastic. Um, it's got a little bit of lemon here. That's a citrusy that'll help get rid of the grease and oils and also help it perfume up better so it doesn't stink. And that is one of the main things that will happen if you don't wash your suit or you don't dry it properly. It will start to stink. So we wash all of the gear here thoroughly every time it comes back to make sure it's in prime condition for you to wear when you go out as well. And if you have your own suit, you obviously want to do that as well. So if you don't have a three sink system like we do, that's totally understandable. One of the things you can use is your tote. You can just put some soapy water in your tote and dunk your, so your, so your suit in the soapy water then you can use your hose or whatever you have nearby to rinse it off that way. But here we have a lot of suits coming back all the time, so we need a pretty sort of factory style system, and that's why we use the sink system and the big drying rack here. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of idea of how we want to um, make the soapy water just the right amount of soap and vinegar. You have whatever amount of vinegar you have in a bottle, but basically for a tub of this size, I'm not sure the liters on it, but the idea is you don't want to put too much vinegar. You need a little bit, but not too much. So we usually just give it a little bit of a splash. One splash like that is plenty of vinegar. And then for soap, we want to use enough soap to make it work for as many wetsuits as we can. But the amount of wetsuits you start putting in there, it just starts to lose soap factor. So with this uh, sink about halfway full, I'll give this little guy a full circle squeeze. And that should be plenty for about four to maybe five or six wetsuits. We want to make sure that we mix it all up properly, so use your hose to try to introduce the air and make it nice and foamy. That's going to make it a lot easier to clean your suits. So we go on setting like this, and now we got lots of mixed up soap and vinegar. So we got our soap all soapy up, and we got our rinse sinks ready to roll. 
We got big wetsuits. These have a lot of material on it, and if you change on a clean surface, you won't end up with sand and dirt all over your suits. So we're gonna go over that part when we talk about putting on and off your wetsuit, how to do it properly so the suits come back ready to be washed as easily as possible. And you're gonna wanna put your, your suit in inside out so that the inside gets cleaner than the outside because the outside essentially just has salt water on it while the inside has been up against your body all day. So we give it a full soapy dunk. We leave the back open and if you have a back zip, try to put your Velcro on so that it doesn't stick to the suit. It starts to pull it apart that way. So pain in the butt, that design, but this is the best way I found to try and make it last longer is put the Velcro on right away, leave the back open so it gets the water in there as well. We do a full, nice, big, soapy dunk. We move it right over to your hanging station and we hang it up always while they're wet by the waist. Do not want to hang heavy, wet wetsuits by the shoulders. When they're dry, they're fine to hang by the shoulders, but when they're wet, if you hang them on a shoulder uh, hanger, they will basically just be stretching out your shoulders a lot. So you might notice that if you wore a suit for several months before and all of a sudden your shoulders feel loose you get a little more flushing the material starting to separate where the stitching is it quite often has to do with hanging it by the shoulders while they're wet so this is the first stage we get them all soapy and then we hang them by the waist to drip off as much soap as we can before they enter the rinse water full dunks straight by the waist now, if you guys have ever had boots before, you know that they can get funky fast and easy. So even if you don't have the ability to wash your wetsuit, and maybe you can only rinse it, do your best to wash your boots because they need to be washed and dried more thoroughly even than your wetsuit realistically because they can just get way too funky way too easy. So if you're renting from us, um, we're going to have clean boots. They're not going to be funky when you get them. But uh, if you have them for several days and they're always wet and never getting dried, that could easily happen. So try, if you don't have a drying way, to, or a way to dry your boots, to just put a little bit of soap, spray some water into your boots and leave them with the soapy water after you shake them up for a while. This will help clean out your boots. So at least if they're not dry, they won't be getting moldy and funky. Now, to wash a boot here, we have these zip up boots. These are the rental boots, your home boots. Maybe if you bought them at the shop and they're directly for you wouldn't maybe have a zip up, but if you got ours and you're renting from us, this is how we want to wash it. Hold that piece of material here. This is the tongue next to the zippers. Sand can get right in there underneath that zipper part. So if you hold it this way, when you dunk it, the sand should brush out. So you can give it a dunk or two before you put about, about a quarter or half of the soapy water in there. Close up the top, and then this is the really important part for your boots. You gotta shake them. You gotta agitate. We need oxygen, bubbles, all of the things to clean out your boots. If you just dunk them, it doesn't really do that good of a job versus if you shake them up, and make them nice and foamy on the inside. So that's a pretty good rinse there, or wash, sorry. And you can just shake it a little bit and put it straight into the rinse cycle. So we're gonna do this with all the boots and then we're gonna rinse them off thoroughly. We'll just do the first two here just to show you. Again, always holding it by the tongue, shaking the toe and heel making sure it's really mixed up in there to get it as clean as possible. Once we're over here in the rinse sink, it's pretty simple stuff here. We don't need to shake anymore. We just want to make sure we're rinsing. So I usually use the double dunk system. Hold it by the tongue again, make sure you can still see there's a little bit of sand in here. So that's why we do a double dunk, double rinse. Make sure we're always getting not only all the insides washed out, but as much as that sand out of the zipper area as possible. Then you wanna hang them up somewhere to drip dry. So you might have to makeshift something if you don't have a system like this, but you can make one at home pretty easy. These are just pieces of wood sticking on another piece of wood and sticking up on an angle so that you can put your boot on with the toe sticking up to allow gravity to pull water out and drip it out that way. To dry it out as much as possible before it goes into the dry room. So if you don't have a full on double dunk system here with two sinks, remember if you used your tote to make the soapy water, all you really need to do is use your hose or whatever you got to give it a thorough rinse that way. Just remember that if you got kind of boot like this, to try and get as much water up here as you can to drain out that sand. That way the zippers don't get stuck as much and they last longer. So that's the boots. 
Now we got some suits sitting here. They're pretty soapy and suits are big. They have a lot more material than boots do. So if we just go straight from soap right into rinse, that rinse water is gonna get really soapy really fast. So what we do here is we make sure that we do all the boots rinsed and washed first while these ones sit soapy and dripping. And then we'll take our hose. We're just gonna give them a pretty good once over spray on all sides. That way our rinse water will last longer and we waste less water. We use the setting on the hose to make sure that it's got the most efficient water uh, coming out of it, not like a jet stream and we're not wasting any more water than we have to. We just rinse it off, get all the soapy stuff off of every side we can see. And now they're pretty good to go into the rinse cycle themselves. Again, if you don't have a rinse cycle system here with many sinks, you can literally just use your hose like you did to rinse it off both outside and stick the hose up in there and rinse off the other side too. And they should be fine if you just rinse them like that yourself. But we go the extra mile here to make sure that everything is very rinsed off so there's no sand and all the salt water that was on it gets off. So keep the back open again, just like we did for washing. And we're just gonna fully dunk the whole suit, make sure water gets into the back zip area. I always bring it up and out as I'm pulling it. That keeps the water from getting super so uh, soapy as well. And then you get another one. And now your suit is pretty much done for the washing and rinsing. It just needs to drip dry before you bring it in to the dry room area. We don't want them in direct sunlight. We never want to dry things in direct sunlight. That's why we have the roof system here over everything to make sure that there is no harsh UV rays drying out the suits and baking them and causing them to fall apart. This is our little dry room where we dry all of the equipment to make sure that when you guys put it on over there when we're fitting, that everything is clean and dry. Um, this system is just a homemade system I did myself. There's other variations of it out there through ski gear and whatnot, but I'll start by showing you how we get the boots and gloves dry. And uh, what we've done here is just put some PVC pipes, drilled some holes along the top here so that when you put a boot in, the toes will drain water out because the toes are up, but we need air to go in here and up. So that's why the PVC pipes that have been drilled through these two by fours are right in front of a fan. So that airflow comes straight up the pipes and then it actually flows it up straight into the toes because of these per perforated holes at the top. So when you have a house fan, um, that's going to drive air in and then we just want to try and dry the air out as much as possible. So that's why we have a dehumidifier in here which I've rigged up with a hose to make sure it doesn't fill up the small bucket here and just stop. Um, we've rigged it up to have the hose go straight into a bigger bucket which lasts all night when we have lots of stuff in here but uh, you could even if you have your own space drill a hole through a wall and dry, try, throw that hose right out there. If you have a drain on your floor already, which unfortunately don't have here, you could literally just let it drain straight into the floor drain and it would run continuously as long as you put it on the continuous setting. Uh, otherwise, we have our suits hanging here. They're on the shoulders when they've come out uh, of the mostly dried stage. But when they come in, they're hung by the waist. And they hang by the waist inside out until they're dry on this side and in the mornings we flip them put them on their shoulders, make sure they're totally dry before they head back in. But this is the kind of system you would want to use if you had your own way of making it at home. You want to create your own little dry room area with a dehumidifier and a source of airflow. So these house fans that I'm using, this household dehumidifier, this is all good enough for my small space here to really dry out the air overnight. But if you're staying maybe in a hotel room or a vacation rental, you're probably not gonna have access to some of these things, specifically the house fans and the dehumidifier. You might, we're on the coast, a lot of places do have them, but if you don't have it, maybe all you have is a bathroom, uh, that's gonna be your smallest, tightest space where you can actually turn the heat on and turn the, the ceiling fan on, which would be the easiest way to heat the room up, which would dry the air out more, and the, the fan circulating the air up top would help it sort of dry out whatever materials you got in there. And specifically with wetsuits, they absorb material, so they're hard to get dry just by dripping them um, in a room that would be very humid with all the wet stuff. So this is the way we get stuff dry here, um, indoors, out of the sun, and yeah, with the system of air, air flow, drying the air out, and yeah, everything that we need to get it on the material. 
suck out those moistures.